this building, One Central Park, was the first major building on the uh, Central Park development. Central Park development was a, a large, was a large urban renewal redevelopment uh, in the south part of the Sydney CBD. It's a very interesting area. It's at the junction of the, the Sydney CBD Peninsula and the Piedmont Peninsula and Central Railway Station. So it's a, it's a sort of knuckle of Sydney. It's also at the transition between the, the dense buildings of the city and the lower scale residential buildings of the adjacent Chippendale. So this building really makes the transition between one type of environment to another. So the, the vision of this building was always to create that linkage between the two and also to make a, a very positive contribution to the surrounding areas through creating a large parkland where there was none in the past. This site used to be occupied by the Carlton United Brewery. It was a walled industrial site. There was very little, if any, public access, certainly no public amenity. So this new development has got a large park at its centre. Uh, on the whole, I think it's got about 30,000 square metres of, of landscaped area, including the vertical walls and the, and the parkland. So it's, it's a very, very significant contribution to the, the area and also a significant increase in amenity to the people living around the area and that's always been part of the vision. One other very important aspect of the design of this building was the relationship of this building with the adjacent UTS uh, tower. These two buildings together form the gateway from the south to the city. It's a very, very important composition. So the combination of the, the relationship to the, the whole city and then the, the fine grain relationship with the adjacent residential areas has been the, the challenge of this building and in a way the success of the building. But it is a, it's a fascinating building at a detail level and also a very successful building at a macro level. PTW uh, were the collaborating architect with Atelier Jean Nouvelle. Atelier Jean Nouvelle are a French based firm who have done remarkable buildings all over the world and they were the concept architects for this building. PTW worked very closely with Atelier Jean Nouvelle, with representatives of their practice who were based in our practice in Sydney, to develop their concepts into what you see today. Uh, that has been the challenge of this building and in a way the, one of the remarkable achievements of this building is that you have an extraordinary building that's unlike any other building in the world that has been achieved in a, in a very conventional way and in some regards a very cost effective way. One of the, the questions we're always asked about this development is how does it make commercial sense? How could you do something so strange? And it is a very odd building how could, compared to any other commercial development around the city. How could you do something so strange in a way that makes commercial sense? And that is the miracle of this building, that it is an extraordinary, very unusual building, but it's built in very conventional ways. So PTW worked very closely with Atelier Jean Nouvelle, and Atelier Jean Nouvelle guided the concept all the way through, and we helped realise their concepts in ways that were uh, made sense to the local construction environment. One example of that might be the, the enormous amount of greenery on the building. When you look at it from any perspective, it's, it's just bizarre, completely unusual, unprecedented in the city and unprecedented in the world, but it's achieved in a very, very basic way. The greenery is either just growing up very simple stainless steel wires, or it is um, uh, growing out of planter boxes. The planter boxes are a simple roto-moulded polyethylene plastic boxes, not unlike garbage bin technology. And they are placed all the way around the building. I think there's almost two kilometres of them. And they are wrapped up then in, a, in an Alucabon panel. So it is very, very basic uh, construction technologies that you'd see on many buildings around the city, but applied in a very unusual and innovative way, in a very cost-effective manner. Uh, and that applies to a whole range of things through this development. Uh, we're standing today for this interview on the Sky Garden. The Sky Garden is an extraordinary object in itself. It's a, a, a cantilevered structure that extends 40 metres beyond, if you include the, the heliostat, extends 40 metres beyond the main building. This has been used again using fairly basic bridge technology. Large steel trusses that embed themselves, two storeys high, that embed themselves into the main building. That again are built using very simple methods. It's just steel that's welded together that's sat onto a concrete frame. There's nothing unusual about it apart from the fact that it's in a residential building and it's 100 metres up in the air. Uh, the heliostat's another remarkable element of this building. One of the principal ideas and one of the consequences of the master plan was that if you are to put 
a large building on the north of the site, that is on the sunny side of the, of the site, you will be blocking the sun from the, the parkland area. So the, the aim of this building, of this arrangement, the heliostat arrangement was to reflect sun from the top of the building adjacent up onto the underside of this sky garden on which we're standing now and back down into the public domain. The, the, the intention was to create not a, a beach-like bright sun environment, but the environment that you would uh, experience as you were walking beneath the tree canopy. So a, a dappled, sunny environment where it's, 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 it just feels nice. You know, it's not, a, it's not a, a parkland in deep shade, it's a parkland which has got the, the charm of, of a sort of a, of a forest in a way. The interesting thing about this building is it's been extraordinary, extraordinarily well received. And, that's for obvious reasons. It's, the building itself uh, makes a significant contribution to the public domain. It, it's, a, it's a beautiful building. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a building which is growing. And there's nothing else like it in Sydney, certainly, and certainly not anything like it in the world. I think the, the difference, the transformation to the areas immediately around the building and also to the, the whole of the environment of this part of Sydney has been significant. So you can't ignore that if you're a developer. If you're trying to make commercial sense of your developments, if you're looking at a development such as this one, which has been able to achieve such positives, creates apartments of such wonderful amenity, be commercially successful, uh, you have to take notice and you have to think, well, how, how have they been able to do that and what lessons can we learn from that? So I think it will have a, a, an impact. It'll certainly make other developers in the city environment think. And it certainly has had a positive impact on the architects around Sydney because it's, it's, it's inspiring to think that this sort of thing, it's not funded by public money, it's not the Opera House where you can just have a go. This is something which is a, 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 has to make commercial sense. So it's inspiring to think that this sort of development can be achieved using no, normal commercial parameters. So I think that's going to have a significant, uh, it's going to get architects and developers around the city thinking.